Hi, this is Megan and Stacy, And we've got another bite-sized episode of Didn't I Just Feed You? So guys, we've been trying to have one a month here for you, but we have exciting news that you can learn all about on our website, didn't I just feed you.com. We are moving our community over to our site. There's a free space that you should join. And there's also a supporting member section and many episodes from this point forward are going to be published there two a month. Isn't that an awesome perk that you get if you're a supporting member? I'm really excited about it. There are other perks too. You can learn all about it on our site. We won't take up too much time explaining it here, but this is the last one that is going to be published widely. All of our regular episodes, all the same every week, but the minis are for supporting members. And I'm just going to tease you a little bit and say the first mini episode that is going live in the community is very juicy. It, it has is. shares some personal information that I have not shared with anyone else yet. <laughs> I hope you'll make a guess about what it is. Um, but speaking of our listeners community, today we're going to talk about picnic food, which is a direct ask from one of our wonderful listeners in our Facebook community. Miss Katie Kurtz says, hello, I'm a mother of three under four and I live in California's armpit. <laughs> That's Is hilarious. There, I know. So great. Is there an episode of picnic meals or do any of you lovely humans have picnic ideas for kids who eat too many sandwiches and don't like meat? Ooh, that's like a double challenge because my first instinct was to be like, pick up fried chicken. <laughs> yeah, mine too. Actually, obviously, that would be mine. But Such absolutely, good fried food. chicken is really good. And I do think that you can do like a, if you want to make it at home, like a chicken tender is really easy because sometimes bones, I don't know, I don't have a problem with it, but I know sometimes people don't like the bones and dealing with all that, especially if you have dogs at your picnic. I don't know. Is my dog the only one who's obsessed with chicken bones? No, not at all. And drop it. It makes me think Ziggy, about... drop it. <laughs> It makes me think about how there's a whole Instagram account dedicated to like chicken wing bones in Atlanta. I'll try to find it and put it in the show. <laughs> okay. So let's brainstorm other ideas. You know, should we talk about picnic food safety like really briefly? Because salads is kind of, especially when we're talking about like moving away from sandwiches and moving away from meat, you know, you get to salads like pasta salad, macaroni salad, coleslaw, and yeah. then it's mayo. And then people are always like, oh, can that sit out for a while? Yeah. And I think it's a good place to talk about what is picnic food really? Because in some ways, Anything can be picnic food, right? If you take a blanket out to your front yard and bring your dinner bowls out there, that's technically a picnic. But I think what we're really talking about here are foods that travel well, aka like not layer cakes that are going to fall over when you drive somewhere, walk into the park, go on a hike, whatever it might be, especially when you're wrangling little kids. And food that is safe at room temperature, ambient temperature for more than two hours. And what we get into with things like pasta salads and potato salads is that mayonnaise has a raw egg in it technically or has some sort of processed egg in it and so getting it in the temperature danger zone which is where bacteria can grow and so if you're gonna like have a potato salad out for three hours well actually you shouldn't (laughs) totally (laughs) yeah Yes. So that temperature danger zone is in between 40 degrees Fahrenheit and 140 degrees Fahrenheit, which, hello, that's like most room temperatures, the temperature outside during the summer. Um, So that's why we want to to make sure that we're not like leaving food that bacteria can grow in at room temperature for too long. Yeah. And I think that the timing of it is about two hours is like a good rule of thumb. Don't leave food out for more than two hours. Yeah. And also, I think it's good to say, you know, we're talking about like no refrigeration, no coolers, no ice packs in that instance. But if you have the wherewithal to like pack a cooler or a cooler bag and add some ice packs, then you give yourself a lot more time of your food being safe while you're you're traveling. So, Stacey, do you do a lot of picnics in York? And what do you take for picnic food? Um, you know, I really love a snack plate 
and like cheese plate, like getting, you know, some cheeses or even like we love Cabot cracker cuts because they're already cut for yes. you and a loaf of bread. You know, cheese is something that you have to especially worry about the danger zone that we were just talking about. Um, and I also really like grain salads. Like, you know, when you want to not have a mayonnaise based salad, you're thinking about what kind of salads have a vinaigrette based dressing. So couscous salad, a quinoa salad, a German style potato salad. I love all of that. Uh, You know, a vinaigrette based pasta salad, more Italian style with, you know, you can put in the salami or not put in the salami. You can also with those pasta salads have different, you know, chunk up the cheese, chunk up the salami and put it in mason jars. And then people can kind of add to the basic as they wish. Yes. One thing when I'm trying to find picnic recipes is I'll look for like lunch salads because a lot of times recipe developers, recipe sites will say, oh, this is a salad that you can pack and will last until lunch. And that also means that it is awesome for salads. And like you said, chopped salads where it's like chickpeas and vegetables and there's a vinaigrette dressing are really great and easy ways to pack picnic food that will last a long time. And also one of the things I personally find with picnics is like I need to prep in advance. So I need to actually be able to like make most of the food the night before, especially if we're going to go like on a hike. So things that last longer in the fridge are also excellent for picnicking. I will say I know Katie asked us to stay away from meat. But I love to do the cheese thing and then do like cured meat and like summer sausage as a way to get a little more protein. But you could easily do like marinated chickpeas or marinated white beans and take those along with your cheese and veggies and make a little like snack, snack platter on your picnic. The other thing that I was thinking about is like veggie sandwiches. I know Katie said she was like, oh, my kids eat too many sandwiches. But what if you flip the script? What if it wasn't? PB and J's, but it was like lots of veggies on a whole wheat bread that you feel really good about. It's like a sturdy bread. Or using making like a hummus sandwich where it's hummus on either side of the bread and there's like grated carrots and shredded lettuce and sliced tomatoes, all the things that are so good in the summertime anyways. And there you're avoiding the dangers of mayo. Your hummus is pretty safe at room temperature for a bit of time. And then you have all these wonderful veggies that you're eating in peak season. Yes. So I want to go back to salads for one second because I want to just go through some good options that will last in the fridge from the night before and then be able to go from the fridge outside for a couple of hours. Kale is really great. Mm. Raw broccoli and cauliflower are really great if you like those. Like, I love a good broccoli salad. I've been making on repeat, just finely chopping raw broccoli with not just miso vinaigrette and dried cranberries and very thinly shaved shallots. And it's delicious. And that would travel really well. Potatoes are a good one. Also, I was talking about vinaigrettes. Pesto. I feel like pesto is a really great picnic ingredient. You can use it as a dip. You can use it as a dressing. You can use it as a sandwich spread, and it's going to stay stable through all of the different refrigeration, not refrigeration, travel. Back to your sandwich idea. Maybe this is because I live in New York, but bagels. We love bagels. Yes. Picnic. <laughs> Stop by the bagel spot, you know, and everything bagel with vegetable cream cheese. You can't beat that. Maybe lox, maybe tomato. Depends on your mood. It's a beautiful thing. But again, cream cheese, you want to make sure that you have a cooler with you. Yes. I also had another salad thought. You got me jogging there, which is, you know, coleslaw is something that people are like, oh, you don't want to leave that out at your picnic or your barbecue. But I think that's because we think of coleslaw as always having to be creamy. There are tons of like cabbage salads that you can make and are great for picnic food. I'm thinking of that very ubiquitous to me. Maybe it's like a has Midwest roots where you take like bagged cabbage, ramen noodles, slivered almonds, and you may, and like whatever other veggies you want to add into it, you could add protein with like some roasted chicken or chickpeas or something like that, or edamame would be great. And then you make like a vinaigrette, which is like rice wine vinegar and soy sauce and the packet of seasoning from the ramen. (laughs) 
I don't know why, but it is like one of those salads that seems so weird and is so good. It's so good. It's so good. If I was going to make it for a picnic, I might just leave the ramen out until like the morning of because you do you don't cook the ramen noodles. They're just like the crushed up ramen noodles. But they and get they nice stay. and like soft. <laughs> yes, from sitting. they do a weird, delicious thing, which is like they're kind of soft on the edge and they're still kind of crunchy and you have the crunchy almonds and it is like the funnest texture of a salad. And that's one of my favorites. And actually, my kids are really into eating uncooked ramen these days. So they are on board with that. That's a delicious suggestion. Sandwiches. Sandwiches. I, we keep going back between sandwiches I know. and salads. I'm like, oh, but you I made go me back. think of a salad. You yeah. Made me think and of then a sandwich. something you said made me think of another sandwich. But using the right bread. So I feel like baguette is really nice if you have cheese and you're doing the snack board thing. I don't know who's into this besides you, but I'm going to I'm going to bow at your feet and say, oh. like, if you want to make homemade pretzels, I mean, I know you've done it. You know, maybe you can get soft pretzels from the freezer section. That's what I, I would do. Say, super pretzel <laughs> all day for a yes. picnic. Yeah, that's a great option. And then also focaccia for pressed sandwiches. Any kind of sandwich where you press it together and actually the flavor gets better, like oil, vinegar, layer, meat and cheese, veggies, whatever it is, and then press it together really hard and let it sit in the fridge overnight. It actually becomes better like that, not like bad sandwich soggy. Yes. I also ad- fully admit to I kind of like a sandwich where there's a little bit of sogginess. My go to as a kid was a, like a classic Italian sub sandwich. You know, it's like ham and salami, provolone cheese and then tomatoes, shredded lettuce and like an, o- an oil and vinegar dressing because I was not into mayo as a kid. And I would take those hiking and like the bread does definitely get soggy. But for some reason, I enjoyed it because at least it was flavorful <laughs> soggy bread. Yeah, it's like that. Yeah. Soaked with vinaigrette deliciousness. Okay, we keep pivoting back and forth, back and forth like a ping pong. Uh, Going back to the snack plate idea, I just had a thought too. Marinated things, marinated mozzarella, marinated radishes, marinated mushrooms. Like you got me thinking when you mentioned beans, like you can marinate beans and put broccolette in there and that would be delicious too. That is a really nice way to serve veggies and an alternative to meat protein that is really fun too and goes beautifully with a spread of like cheese and cured meats and breads. Why did that make me think of breakfast food? Because I don't like, know. <laughs> now I'm like, oh, marinated stuff. Us. You could take jammy hard boiled eggs yes. or you could make yogurt parfaits and take those with you. Like it doesn't have to be lunch food or dinner food just because it's a picnic. Yes. And I guess you gave that gave us that permission slip by saying bagels. Right. Yes. Break the rules. Break the rules. Picnics. Break the rules. Um, also. Please pack canned wine. (laughs) (laughs) Or canned cocktails. (laughs) Canned cocktails. Real quick, picnic equipment. I think this is one of those activities where having a great cooler, having a great picnic knife, and maybe a great picnic blanket is the difference in your comfort and your pleasure. What do you think is essential to pack for picnics? I definitely have a soft-sided cooler if it's just our family. I have two of them, actually. That way, everybody can help carry stuff, and no one's stuck with one big mega cooler. (laughs) Um, If you live in a city and you're going to be schlepping a little bit like we do in New York, you might want to have one of those foldable, like, grocery carts. So smart. To take everything with you. Um, Thermoses to keep stuff cold, your drinks cold. What else? Oh, and a great blanket, for sure. A great blanket. We have a really big one that has one side that's waterproof and the other side that's soft. Yes. I would also add a great picnic knife. I'm really into Opinel's picnic knife because it has a blade that, like, it's closed like a pocket knife. It has a blade that you can pull out, and then it also has a corkscrew on the other end. Oh, my gosh. Corkscrew. And a bottle opener in case you choose not to bring canned wine or canned cocktails. I've been in that position. It sucks. You get into the middle of Central Park, and you're like, oh, no. How do we get to our wine? Yeah. And then I think 
a little inexpensive plastic cutting board is great to take with you. Not only because you can like cut up things if you last minute stopped at like the farm stand and you need to cut up some um, cucumbers or tomatoes or whatever to share with your cheese and bread, but also because it's a great surface to set things on that it like won't get bounced around as much as like just containers sitting on the picnic blanket or in your picnic basket. I say picnic basket because isn't that so idyllic? But I it really have is. <laughs> two, I have two vintage ones. And you know when the last time I used them was? Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Someone gifted us a really beautiful one, too, that had, like, compartments and, you know, reusable plastic, like, sturdy wine glasses and those picks that you can put in the ground to steady your wine glass. It's so cute and great and and never. That's why I like those soft-sided <laughs> coolers. Yes. And on picnic blankets, if you don't want to invest in like a true picnic blanket, one of my little hacks is like going to the dollar store and getting a shower curtain and you put that down first and then put one of your like favorite household blankets on top of it. And that way you're not getting moisture through from the ground. It's a really nice, easy thing to do. And like you buy one at the beginning of the season and you can recycle it or save it for painting projects or whatever at the end of the season. So it's not super wasteful plastic waste that is super smart megan oh one more thing i know we're supposed to keep it mini please always pack salt and if you have the forethought yes some sliced lemons thank me later when you have a salad and you're like "Mm, i wish this had a little bit something else those two things will save you brilliant i think Um, on that brilliant note that's the way to close it out hey Find us as Didn't I Just Feed You on Instagram and Facebook. And be sure to visit didn'tijustfeedyou.com to sign up for our new listeners community. Our music is Good Old Times by Alex Cohen, provided by Jim Endo. A huge thank you to our editor, Samantha Gatsik. Thanks for listening. Stay sane and well-fed. Until next time. <laughs>